Does anybody own anything in their house that they're just like overly attached to for no reason? Um, I do. I don't know if anybody else does. But it's literally my baby group. So he's a little solar panel like he moves and dances with the sun where the solar panel is. It just sits in my window seal and all day he just... Like, normally that sound would annoy me, but look at him. How would that annoy you? He's so stinking cute. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Kendall, and today we are going to be doing a different type of wrap-up. So, I have been really bored in my wrap-up videos. Um, you could probably tell, but I think it's just because it's like... It's fun to talk about your TBRs and things like that because you are introducing books. You get to tell about what the books are going to be about. And you guys may not know, like, have heard of these books or may not know that we haven't read them or anything like that. So it's fun to get there to a point where, like, you get to just talk about what you're going to read. And I love, love talking about books that I have read and what I've liked about them, what I haven't liked about them, but sometimes it just gets like, feels like a chore. But I had an idea for the wrap up videos that I do every month and I think that it is going to make it a lot more fun and it will be enjoyable for me and you guys to watch as well. So I've seen the book superlative tag that a lot of people do at the end of the year where they go through the different like book superlatives and pick out books that fit those ta those specific superlatives. But I decided that each month I'm going to do a monthly book superlative award. And there are different superlatives that I have come up with for each book that I've read during the month. And I'm also going to be doing a small review it's going to be a one sentence review. So I'm going to do try to do these every single month. Um, and it was so much fun to just sit down and think of the different like awards I could give to these books. And I think that you will enjoy them too. I want to go ahead and let you guys know at the beginning of this video that there are probably going to be spoilers within the superlatives that I give or the sentences that I give as a review so if you have if I say the book and you haven't read it please go ahead and skip that part of the video so you do not get spoiled um, also I'm going to be telling you guys like what my rating was for the books as well um, I will go I'll like you'll see how I'll do the first one and it'll be the same way for each book afterwards so I will tell you the book what I rated it um, and then go on from there but let's go ahead and dive right into this video the first book that I read was the good sister by Sally Hepworth I read this at the very beginning of the month um, which feels like an eternity away but it really wasn't I think I gave this book four or five stars I can't remember if I gave it five stars I will probably go back and change it to four stars just because the ending was kind of predictable but it was a really good book and it had really great characters overall I am giving this book the superlative of the worst attempt at a kidnapping you know who i'm talking about if you've read the book you know who i'm talking to um and the thing that i got out of this book was that you should never trust your sibling completely um i don't know about you guys but i was terrorized by my sister as a child and i'm sure that i terrorized her when we were children as well but i slept with one eye open for a long time so I suggest highly that that also happened in this book um, but it was a really great read overall I am getting more into the mystery and thrillers that was like my main goal for this month and it went perfectly so this was a really good start to like get me into what mystery and thrillers are all about the next book I read I do not have physically with me. I am letting a friend borrow it and it is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. Um, I rated this book a five stars. Um, I do really like this book. There was one part in the book specifically towards the end that I really just didn't care for. Um, so it's probably more like a 4.5 for me but I rated it up because I thought it deserved it. Um, it was a really really good 
book. Um, I just thought that there was one kind of, not like trope, but one piece of drama that was added to the book that wasn't really necessary for the book to be successful. Um, I'm giving the superlative of the best debut novel that I have read so far um, to this book. It was so good. I haven't read, read many debut novels. Um, I've read, you know, books that they have written that, you know, were written after other books that they wrote or just different things. So I've never really, like, been a big reader of debut novels, but this one was so good. I cannot wait to read more from this author when she does release more. Um, the, the review that I would probably give this one is going to be having history with someone makes it a lot harder to let them go. Um, take from that what you will. Uh, there are so many people in this book that that could apply to in so many different relationships, so I thought that that would be a great way to sum up every character and their relationship with every other character in this book. The next book that I read was Shark Summer by Ira Marks, which is a middle grade graphic novel. I talked about this one a little bit in some of my previous videos. It's like kind of a loose based Jaws retelling, almost, but not really. It has like ghosts and different things in it as well, but it reminded me a lot of Jaws. Um, so I really enjoyed that aspect. I think I gave this one four stars. I don't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure it was like four stars. Um, I would probably give it like a 3.5 or 4, to be honest. I'm giving this one the award of most likely to end up in juvie. I think that all of these characters are likely to end up in juvie um, for different reasons, mainly breaking and entering. That's a bad thing that they just didn't understand, it felt like, in this novel. Um, my review for this book is that if there is a mysterious entity in the ocean, it's probably best to just leave it there. Um, there's not really much you can put with that one. I mean, it makes makes sense, right? Like, I'm not going to go messing with mysterious entities that I have no business messing with. But that's just me. The next book that I read in June was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, I believe is how you say it. Um... I picked this one up specifically because it was so popular and Emily Henry did a blurb on it. I think I ended up giving this one four stars, I believe. It's probably like four or 4.5 stars for me. I'm giving this one the award of the best person to be deserted on an island with, specifically going to Daniel. Um, I don't think that Alex or Alexis would be like that bad of a person to be stranded with because she is an ER doctor and she would be highly prepared but Daniel just strand me you know what desert me on an island I don't even care leave me there I will willingly go to an island and be deserted with Daniel um so that should tell you what I feel for Daniel and the only thing I have to say about this book is could a guy who owns a pajama wearing goat be any more perfect the next book that I read was Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pemborough. I did buddy read this with Caitlin from Pride and Paperback and we had a great time. She and I both recorded our reactions and sent them to some of our friends and exchanged them with each other. She even put hers live on YouTube which was the best thing to ever watch. So I highly recommend that you go check it out. We were baffled. I ended up giving this a five star read. It was the perfect, one of the best mystery thrillers that I've picked up so far. The award that I'm giving this one is most likely to have sleeping problems. Um, I don't know if it's like a trend and you guys can definitely let me know but Sarah Pemborough, the two books that I have read of hers which have been Behind Her Eyes and Insomnia, both have dealt with sleeping issues and they've like sleeping has played a big part in both of her novels so I don't know if that's something that she is like she struggles with herself like sleeping issues or if it's just something that she's very you know intrigued by so if you know let me know in the comments down below I've been doing research on interviews to see if I can find out more because I just find it very interesting um the review for this book is if you kissed a guy who was married he is not worth the hassle honey he's really not like some of the trouble that you go through to get a married guy I don't get it I I just don't understand the next book that I read is Finley Donovan is killing it by El Cosimano this book was 
hilarious. It's also a mystery thriller. I gave it five stars. It kept me on my toes. It um, had a really good twist at the end, which I did not expect. And Finley and Vero were just the easiest people to fall in love with. They are the best duo that I have read in a book. I cannot wait to see what they get into in the next book and the third one when it comes out as well. But the award that I'm giving this one is the best cover up of an accidental homicide. Finley has outdone herself with this. And the review that I have for it is, do not talk loud enough in public for other people to hear you. Or you will end up possibly covering up an accidental homicide yourself. But the next one I read was The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. I gave this one a three stars. Um, it wasn't like not enjoyable. I did enjoy the aspects. This was probably one of the first, um, I think it was the first like young adult mystery thriller books that I have read. And it did keep me intrigued. I really did like Goldie as a character. I really loved the friendship, that aspect that was in this, in this book because you have friends keeping secrets from each other because they are trying to protect each other. But secrets just end up hurting people anyway but the award that I'm giving this book is most likely to drain your bank account and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about if you have read this book and the only thing that I have to say about this one is seriously who thought that a camp full of rich kids was a good idea because clearly it wasn't I mean you have a book with a bathing suit and blood spattered everywhere the next book that I read this month and for the Suns Out Books Out Readathon was It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I think I gave this one a three stars as well. It's probably like a three, 3.5. I really enjoyed most of the story, but Piper to me was a very annoying character and I just did not enjoy her at all. Um, even like when she learned her lesson, I still didn't really enjoy her. Um, but Brendan definitely made the book for me and is the reason that it got like a three-ish star rating. I'm giving this book the award of most likely to get caught in action, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. And the one sentence review that I have for this book is I am very shocked that Piper and Brennan were never caught or walked in on once while they were doing it. There's, I mean, there's no other way to say it, you guys. This book was... Tessa Bailey writes smut. She writes it. Like, she writes it well, but she does write it. She, it... Sometimes it was a little much, but I um, definitely, definitely was shocked that nobody like, you know, whoo, you know, you know. The next book I received from one of my very sweet close friends, Elizabeth, over from Ponytails and Paperbacks, and she sent it to me with this note, and she said, Kindle, just a tiny token of appreciation sent your way to say, one, I love you, two, this book has the super succulent, gorgeous, garden, cute illustrations, and three, you deserve it. I love you, Elizabeth. I do not deserve you. You are the best, and I am so grateful for you. She sent me The Secret Garden, a graphic novel, which is adapted by Mariah Mardson, Marsden, not Marsden, Marsden, and illustrated by Hannah Lutchfeld, I believe is how you say her name. Um, I already really know, I think like a lot of people know besides me, like the story behind the secret garden. So I'm not going to go big into details of what this is about, but I gave this one the award of having the best art style in a middle grade book so far. I really enjoyed it. It's, I've told people like it reminds me of like Madeline meets Amelia Bedelia from my childhood and it was exactly what I needed to finish the month of June with. Um, my review for this book is I couldn't stand Mary cousin in the original book and the movie and I still am annoyed by him to this day so I get look I get his story I do but goodness gracious and the very last book that I read on the last day in June was Witch Hat Adler volume 2 by Kamome Shirahama I believe is how you say the name I just want to take a minute to appreciate how beautiful these covers are they're gorgeous. I love them. I only have the first three volumes and I've already read them that I have. So I, I read the third one literally not that long ago. Um, and I need the rest of them as soon as possible. Um, I gave this one the award of the best group of potential witches because they're the cutest things. They remind me of like, um, if like the witches from like Practical Magic were younger, 
they would be like them. Like, I think they're adorable. I really also enjoy old Ruggio, who has come in here, and Quiffery, who has been their teacher through all of their magic. And I have a question as my one sentence review for this book, and it is, will all father figure types remind me of Steve Harrington from now on? Quiffery definitely gives me the Steve Harrington vibes. He is definitely concerned about these four girls that he is teaching, and he tries to do best by them, and it's just the love that he has for them and he's not related to them at all reminds me exactly of Steve's loves for all of the kids that he has been over since like season one which I don't know if you guys have seen but I have seen the all of Stranger Things as of now I watched the last two episodes um, of season four which was volume two and I'm still not over it I'm still um, emotionally distraught and I probably will be for quite a while um, so you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you have watched it how you're holding up how you're feeling this is a safe space for all Stranger Things lovers so I'm here for you but definitely let me know if you guys have enjoyed this kind of new layout that I'm doing with my wrap-up videos and if I should continue it and I will see you guys in the next video